picked a big bucket full of morels today. Got all those in one trip. I'm gonna do a spore print. I'm gonna do spore print on young ones, big ones, these darker, older ones, and then you know a medium size, um, chunky. We're gonna do some of these bigger ones that are you know these been out in the woods on the ground for at least three weeks. Okay, maybe pushing four weeks. So yeah, been three. This one's been out for at least three weeks in the woods. Okay, hey, here here's what I've come up with. Okay. I've um, got a variety there. Um, that guy there is about a four-week-old mushroom picked today. Um, that one's about a uh, three-week-old mushroom picked two days ago. And these two are picked fresh today, but uh, varying in size and color. Cover them up to kind of control the spore print and the spread. There we go. And we can absolutely definitely um, see a wide variance in uh, what we ended up with here. So obviously have a lot of spores here and nothing visible here and here. These larger white particles that you see are sawdust. Um, sawdust has a very common place in my shop. Uh, it gets everywhere. So Okay, so here was what we've got. Um, obviously the one that um, dropped a lot of spores. Um, he was... About a four week old morel and was picked fresh that day and put on this paper the same day. Picked and put on this paper to dry the same day. Um, so he was the, the oldest mushroom amongst the group. These two here were smaller yet mushrooms, but I know for a fact they were definitely at least two weeks younger than this one. Uh, doesn't seem to, um, to the eye, no, that's to the eye, to the naked eye. Doesn't seem to be too many spores laying around there. About a three week old morel, and it had been in the fridge, in my refrigerator for two days before being placed on here. So that gives you a little information as far as maybe the chances of a morel sporing out after you've refrigerated it. Right in this area now, I can see um, some, some new little brown specks. All these bigger white specks are sawdust, all of that. But right in here, hopefully we can pick up on a little trace amount of the spores. Not much though. I'm gonna turn this guy over and give him a few knocks and see if anything happens. And so, definitely picked up some more spores right in here. Hopefully, this will show up. So, each one of these cups here is full of spores. Um, I can look down in them. Um, in each one of the individual cups that make up the cap of the morel. A lot of people call them pits, um, but they are individual little cups or pits. Um, they are pits, um, described by most as pits. They have pitted caps. Each one of those is a... Um, is a small cup, just like an individual cup fungi. They produce their spores the same way. Um, it's just that a morel has a whole bunch of individual little cups or pits. Um, but yeah, you kind of see what we got going on there. Okay, it's kind of just a, a flower at this point. The side of the mushroom was facing up. I can see just tons of spores okay so this side of the mushroom was facing up and the spores didn't get a chance to fall out of it okay okay nothing really happened too much okay we didn't see spores fly all over so this is the side that was facing down okay and as i rotate it hopefully you'll be able to see the change in the look and color of it as I rotate it and show you the side that was facing up. Can we see how it's more goldeny and yellow? That's the side there that was facing up. I banged on it and they didn't come out. Those spores through kind of maybe, you know, just moisture in general in the atmosphere has kind of, and this was covered up on my shelf. There was a lack of, of wind or water dispersing these spores. Um, as far as I know, morels, their, their spores are mainly dispersed by water, not the wind, okay? Uh, 
you know that a morel is very moist. When that spore falls from its, what I will call, skin, okay, I will call the mushroom's outer exterior, exterior its skin. A morel in general is, uh, or mushroom in general is mostly water, right? So when that spore falls out, it doesn't necessarily get blown out into the wind, okay? Even as a mushroom dries, because the spores stick to that wetness and kind of create a bond back onto the surface of the morel. Yes, do some of the spores get blown and dispersed by wind? Absolutely, duh, they're, they're fine as dust. Um, but rainwater is the main culprit to dispersing morel spores. These are individual cups, okay? The water goes in there and splashes and splashes it out. If you're familiar with cup fungus, there's one right there, okay? We call these teacup mushrooms. Anytime I find morels, these are in the immediate vicinity. Immediate, side by side with them, okay? Um, and they can get pretty big. They can get to four or five, six inches around. I've seen them on really wet ears, okay? They're very closely related to a morel, even though they're very different. But as far as how the morels are dispersed, they're very similar. A cup fungus, just a cup. The spores come to the surface in here and are formed and rain hits them and splashes them out. And they, of course, immediately fall right down to the ground, right beside the mushroom. Hopefully we can see that. Anyway, we're definitely not um, doing this in its natural environment. So lots of variables come into play. But as I said, I believe most spores are dispersed by water droplets hitting it. Um... And the morel spores don't, I believe the majority of morel spores don't travel as far as most people think, naturally. If this was standing in the woods and it went naturally through its life cycle, falls over to the ground, I think mostly, most of the spores stay right there. The exterior surface of a morel is moist even at its drying conditions, even as it's dying. Um, a lot of times they start to turn to kind of a goo, a rubbery, slimy goo making those spores even more adherent to its skin. And by the time uh, it dries out, it's kind of made a, it's kind of tacked to the surface of the skin. I don't think they travel as far as most people think. It just might bring up some uh, ideas and concerns of how many spores you really are dispersing um, as you harvest morels. Are you dispersing morels as you harvest them? Absolutely, no doubt. There's certainly techniques that can be used to further increase that after you harvest your morels. You can even collect spores after you harvest your morels and still eat them that night or the next night. If you have a mere, if you have a mere two hours between the time you get home with your morels, if you have a mere two hours before you want to cook them babies up and eat their deliciousness, you can collect spores by simply letting them lay out individually on a napkin or paper towel and returning that napkin and paper towel to the woods. Guarantee you, I'm right up there. Top one percenter of putting morel spores down in the woods. I might be not putting them where you necessarily want me to be, but I am certainly putting more morel spores back in the woods than you have ever been concerned about. When I get when I get home with my morels, whether I'm using a bucket, a bag, a dump truck, whatever I got, my morels dry out for an hour, two, maybe even longer on the counter before they are put into their, their vessel of my choice after they're harvested. After they har are harvested, I'm collecting spores and returning them to the woods. After the morels have been removed from that vessel, that vessel does not get washed before it gets wiped out with a moist pepper towel to gather up the spores that might have been 
have fell, fallen out. Right. If I have an abundance, there are several morels that go into my spore bags to dry and dehydrate and release spores in that bag. So this right here, if you think this is a god-awful amount of spores, if I put 10 morels in my spore bag every year, I'm putting more morel spores back in the woods than you can imagine. Am I maybe dispersing them? Am I maybe dispersing them all the way along the, the path from my vehicle, from my destination through the woods and back? No, no, I'm not. But you tell me, honestly, honestly answer this from inside yourself. If you've been using a mesh bag for years and years and years, and I'm not just trying to discourage anybody from using a mesh bag. Maybe you don't have time to do what I'm doing. You don't have time to take your spores back to the woods. You don't have time to put your spores in an ideal spot that will grow morels. You don't have the time to put your spores back for, gathered from here and there and take them all and put them back into your honey hole where you know morels produce year after year and intensify, magnify, and amp up that area with morels. Maybe you don't have time to do that. So you use a mesh bag or a um, some kind of a, a vessel that allows the, the spores to disperse as you are picking. So yeah, not discouraging a mesh bag in whatsoever. But there are, I'm on a different level of collecting spores. And that's what everybody needs to understand. And I hope you guys start doing the same thing. So anyway, be honest with yourself. Over the years... Have you started finding morels on that path through the woods that you take? Back and forth to the morel spot, back to your car. Okay, in a general area, maybe you walk a walking trail to there and back. Maybe you follow a deer trail to there and back. And it is absolutely the same pathway year after year. Even if you zigzag through the woods and go in circles, you generally are coming from your point A to point B, your mushroom patch. Honestly, over the years, have you found morels spread out all over in that area suddenly? Answer yourself that honestly. All those bazillions of spores that you've moved. I'm taking these spores and I'm putting back in an area that I know produce morels. And the ground's right, the vegetation right, the trees are healthy right, the um, microcilium is in distress, whatever it takes to produce these guys right here, that's what I'm going to do. I'm taking my spores back to where I know they're going to be the most effective. The guy, the gal that says you should use a onion sack, potato sack. You have never picked 15 morel pound, 15 pounds of morels that maybe say even have some age on them that are kind of getting crumbly and carried them four, five, six, seven, eight miles up and over honeysuckle and up and down creek banks through the wood to get home to discover that you then have 40 pounds of crumbs in the bottom of your mesh bag. Fresh, nice, fresh. Um, supple morels, they do fine in a mesh bag. But you know, it doesn't take long for them babies to start turning bad and get delicate. That's it. That's why I carry a bucket. Collecting the spores and protecting my morels. One, two, Three. Go this way. I'm just going to tap a hole in there. It melts that quick and easy. <laughs> 